Hi all, uh, my name is Kier, and uh, I work uh, as a platform engineer at Shopify, and uh, today my talk is about uh, running jobs at scale. Uh, before I begin with this talk, uh, I just wanted to, to say uh, thanks to all Garuko organizers. Let's give them a quick round of applause. I've heard of Garuko as a really great Ruby conference, which I really wanted to uh, to come and speak at uh, since 2015. Uh, I applied that year. Uh, I applied next year, too. And 2017, <laughs> uh, that, that didn't work out. But I was so happy to, to get this email from Joe this year. Uh, I also heard this is the, the last Garuko, so it feels uh, very special to be here. Um, so my talk. Um, um, background jobs. Um, many of you here are Rails developers. And you've probably worked with uh, libraries like ActiveJob and Sidekick uh, that uh, let you uh, define uh, units of work that you want to execute in the background. Uh, those are usually units of work that you don't want uh, your users to wait right on the web requests. Asynchronous things like um, sending emails and notifications uh, or exporting, importing uh, some longer things that you don't, then you want to be asynchronous. And uh, the definition of, of these jobs usually looks like this. Uh, there is a, a method, um, oh, sorry, there is a Ruby class uh, of, the, um, of some name, uh, and uh, there is a perform method, which is the, the entry point that defines the, the logic that the job does. Now let's jump to, to a more uh, real example. In this job, we iterate over uh, all products, all records in the database, and call some, some method of, on, on them. Um, in this example, it's uh, sync and re refresh. Uh, maybe sync all the products in your database with some uh, other store, reconciliate the data, and uh, refresh the records. Um, very common pattern from what I've seen um, in, in jobs. And this works fairly well. Uh, especially when you have um, just a few records in the database. When you have hundreds of records, the, the job will complete uh, in a few seconds. You get to thousands of records. It takes minutes. And uh, when you get to millions of records, uh, the job starts taking days or even weeks. And here we come to a problem of long-running jobs. Uh, let me explain why long-running jobs are sometimes problematic. So when you deploy a new revision of code uh, and you want to roll it out, uh, the idea usually is to, that you shut down workers of the old revision, some processes that are running old revision of your Rails app, and you start uh, same workers but on the new revision, so new code, um, so that new code gets to production. But how you think about how you do that if you have a job that has two or three more hours to run, um, and you have to do something with that, with that. One approach would be to wait for all the workers to complete, um, to complete their jobs, but then the, the deploy, the rollout, would take uh, days, oh, sorry, hours or even days if you have some really, really long jobs. So the approach that many libraries, like, like Sidekick, uh, takes is that they upward the job and push it back to the queue so that it will be retried in the future by some other worker on the new revision. But then uh, the, the existing progress gets lost. Um, and this, is, this gets even worse when you have frequent deploys. Uh, this uh, simple illustration um, with the timeline. Uh, so you have a, some job that started running, then the deploy comes, you abort the job, the job starts again after the deploy. It's aborted again. And it's possible that if you have frequent deploys, and at Shopify, we have so many developers. We deploy every, we typically deploy every 20, every 20 minutes during uh, working hours. So during those working hours, uh, no job that takes longer than 20 minutes would be able to succeed. Uh, maybe in the night or in the weekend, there would be a window of no deploys. And uh, the job may eventually uh, complete, but um, the experience there wasn't that nice. 
the next problem is uh, capacity and worker starvation, because if uh, you have, if, um, if, when you get with more long-running jobs, there is a higher probability that too many workers will be busy with those long-running jobs. And if you have some higher priority job to process, uh, something like a job that processes a payment that is important to execute earlier rather than later, all the workers would be busy with uh, long-running jobs. And it becomes a problem because your user will have to, your customer will have to wait for that payment processing or a checkout. Uh, Long-running long jobs are also trickier uh, in, in, in cloud environments because in those environments, hardware is less predictable and Google or AWS may give you a notice that this instance will be shut down in a few minutes because uh, it's not too healthy. And your code, your application code, your logic must be ready to handle those interruptions that come from cloud environments. And for us at Shopify, this started to become um, um, a very pressuring problem because we were getting to too many long-running jobs. We could also find workers that were running jobs that are taking weeks. At, at the same time, we were moving to cloud, um, and we had to do something about this. And we started researching why the rest, we, get, we got so many jobs that are taking long. And uh, from what we found is that it mostly happens because uh, those jobs iterate over a long collection. Uh, for instance, Shopify is a commerce platform, so we have merchants on our platform. We had jobs that iterate over all products of every merchant for each merchant. And for, merchant, for a smaller merchant uh, uh, that has less products, the job would compete faster. And for an enterprise merchant with millions of products, the job would take forever. So we started thinking, what if jobs were interruptible and resumable? What if we could abort them on deploys, but somehow save the progress and then start the job later, but from exactly the same point where it was stopped. Uh, we came um, to this idea of splitting the job definition into two parts. One, collection to process, which can be uh, a smaller collection or a longer collection, can be a million of records in the database, and work to be done on each record. So in our previous example, collection to process would be product.all, uh, all records in the database, and uh, the work to be done would be a method call on, on, each, uh, product, um, on each product object. Uh, this is how it started to, to look like. Uh, we would include uh, some module that, uh, that gives this iteration feature. Uh, this is the very simplified version, but um, uh, we would have uh, Instead of having one perform method that does things, we would have a method that defines a collection and then uh, a method that um, is called on every record in that collection. By giving this a bit more structure, uh, we, we unlocked um, the, the interruption and res uh, resumability. If we started thinking about a relation or active record relation or some collection of objects as a, uh, um, as a collection, uh, then we could have a cursor and then iterate over it and persist the cursor between uh, job interruptions and then eventually it would get to the end of collection and the job would finish. Uh, this was not just for active record, uh, active record relations. We, in fact, we could build any enumerators uh, and even some custom ones, or a CSV file uh, could also be an, a enumerator. Uh, when we started uh, introducing this, we never realized what kind of possibilities this brings. Um, for instance, we could uh, do progress tracking for free. We could also parallelize uh, computations because those units of work were uh, smaller and really well described. We could also start throttling uh, those jobs and iterations automatically based on load on the database. And for people who are responsible for the uptime of the infrastructure, uh, uh, like my team, uh, this allowed us to make in scale invisible for developers, even if the collection that they want to iterate on has millions of records. Um, uh, it gave 
it unlocked success for the cloud runtime and um, even got us the opportunity to save money with short living instances in cloud, which are cheaper, but they can disappear at any point because now all our units of work were interruptible and the progress was, uh, was saved. Uh, we're uh, going to open source this very soon, and uh, I'm also looking forward to chat with uh, any of you who have been solving uh, problems related to, to background jobs. Uh, that's something that my team works on. And thank you all very much.